Welcome to the Zapata Brand Podcast, Boxing Edition. And we are back once again, our second uh, filming of the Zapata Brand Podcast, Boxing Edition. This morning we had Rich on. Afterwards, I always do the two-punch combination. I have Rich, Coach Rich, and Coach D. Coach D is good enough to join us again coming back from Williamsport. Coach D, long trip in? Uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Uh, the drive was pretty nice, about 45 minutes in. Yeah, the first thing we got to do is talk about last week. Yeah. Ooh, boy. That yeah. was bad. Both of us way off, way off on, on the predictions. Um, is What did you think? As far as the fight goes, what did you think was the biggest surprise? Was it, was it how bad Spence was or how good Crawford was? Well, we know Crawford is, you know, pound for pound the best. I just think it's it was how, you know, Spence wasn't as sharp. And I think the, you know, of Car Crawford being more active was the difference. And also he started a lot earlier. You know, I said you mean that. More, more active uh, fighting-wise the last year or yeah, so? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, he was very active in the ring. Yeah. That was that was you know neither here nor there at, at this point. He, it's um, <clears throat> you uh, when you after you saw it, did you think rematch or no? Uh, I did not think rematch. Um, okay, but you just never know. I don't know how there could be an, a rematch. I really don't. I think he needs time off. I think he needs to regroup. Um, I don't think he should tr uh, change trainers. No I, think no, I think Derek. I think Derek James is good for him. No, I don't think he should change trainers. Um, I do think he just needs to get checked out a little bit. There might be something wrong in, you know, with his eyes. There was eyes a lot at, of speculation, yeah, a lot, that, that there was, that it was just too easy. Or was Crawford better than we thought? We all know Crawford was good, so, I mean. I, I will tell you, I'll be the first to admit, Crawford is better than I thought. I did not think he was as good as he was. I just think the I thought the size was going to take the advantage from Spence. I mean, from just you know, putting the pressure on and going on and I going on. Uh, you know, I can't believe we were, I was that far off. I can't believe I was that far off. That was the, the, one of the biggest surprises I had was that fight. It, it really was. Uh, the biggest surprise I had is, you know, him basically knocking him down three times. And Well, you predicted he hadn't hit the floor, and boy, he was bouncing around like a bouncing <laughs> ball. Yeah. <laughs> he was bouncing up and down. I couldn't believe. And then he looked, he looked like he was on roller skates from round one on. Yeah. Uh, no, round two, two on. Round two. Round two on. He just, he reminded me of like Andrew Galata when he would get, you know, when he'd get rocked. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was totally, totally uncharacteristic. Not, totally. Yeah, totally uncharacteristic. Characteristic. Yes. Um, so the thing is, is he, Crawford started early and that was the main that thing. Was that yeah, was, it was key. That was key. It was key. It was key for, for him to get off early so he didn't have to worry about getting tired later in the rounds. And then having to do the old catch up because mm -hmm. I, I, from what we saw, which obviously didn't pan out in the ring, from what we saw, Spence got stronger as the fight would go on. He didn't in this no. fight. He, he he was totally blown out from from round one on. Yep. But let's turn our attention now to the fight tonight. Um, as I was talking to Coach this morning, Coach Rich is really he's doesn't really look at this as a fight fight for boxing. You know, Rich is a purist. Yeah. Rich loves the fights. Mm -hmm. But he loves boxing. He he thinks this is a celebrity type of deal. You got two dis different disciplines. Now, uh, what? Let me give you. You're more. You are more in depth with MMA than I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nate Diaz. Yep. Uh, sparred a lot with Andrew War Andre Ward. Uh, does a lot of sparring boxing wise. Was first really one of the first that I thought, thought was a striker in, in the in uh, MMA, MMA game. Yep. What is your what is your breakdown of him? Like what what do you see as him as far as what he can do tonight? So I I think he um, you know his style is a little different. He throws the ang his angles are different. Um, he throws some weird punches. Um, he's gonna his you know cardio is one of the best in mm -hmm. MMA. He's not gonna stop. He's not gonna stop. He's just gonna keep on throwing those punches at him. Um, do you think he's got the power to hurt someone like Jake Paul? And I, the only reason why I say this. Is Jake Paul is a legit 175, 185 pound. I mean, he just is legit. Oh yeah, he's a, he's bigger. He's, he's big. He's bigger. He's bigger than Nate. Um, I think the later rounds he could, but not right away. Okay. Now that that being said, as far as Nate goes, let's turn your attention to Jake. Jake is a guy who I feel is really putting the work in. Mm -hmm. He's putting the work and he's putting the time in. That is what money does. Yep. You can really buy the best trainers, the best equipment, the best sparring partners, the best management. You could get it all. But 
he does have skill. You can't say he doesn't. He has some skill. He's 100% into this. Uh, he is. And that, well, that was the big thing. I didn't know how, you know, the guy was on Disney for crying out loud. Yeah. W- w- it usually tends to be someone who has a rough upbringing who's been through the fire that comes out and, and, and they're fighters. This is totally opposite. The guy had money before he got into boxing. Yep. And now he's legitimately putting his life on the line. Because you go into the ring anytime against anybody, you're putting your life on the line. He doesn't have to do this. No, he does not. I think in the beginning it was a little show for him. But then he started picking up some steam and he was like, you know what? I think I could do this. I think the Woodley fight was the one that put him further ahead the, the further yeah. ahead of, of what he thought he could do. Yeah. I really think that's the one that really put him over the edge. As now, far as one or two. Woodley, one or two. I think two yeah. was the one that when really... He, when, he knocked him down, when he knocked him out cold... Yeah, uh, yeah. You don't put someone to sleep like that and think, especially oh, you know Woodley. What? Woodley, who I, you know, I only seen him get knocked out once, and that was probably early in was his that career. In strike Force? It was in Strike Force, and it was I forget the guy's name who knocked him out, um, but a guy, uh, definitely a good fighter, and knocked him out, and he was out. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't, I don't see him. And not thing, coming in with power in this fight. I don't see him not having the advantage of power in this fight. No, I uh, who Nate? Uh, no, Jake. I think Jake has the advantage. Yeah, I think Jake. Well, he's a favorite. Um, is uh, he a favorite? Yes, he is. I think he's like a. I think negative two thirty, two fifty. Well, then if that's the case, Vegas is yeah. Vegas is usually right on. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're usually right. They don't like to lose. No, so. I would say break this. down if you can just break down Jake as far as what you see tonight. Have. What do you, what do you see tonight for his so, keys to victory? What's his keys to victory? His keys to victory is work the distance, back, box him, and set up the right hand. Oh, Jake same ha- thing. Jake has a good, actually has a really good right hand. Yeah. Um, but he has to he can't dip his head down when he throws the right hand. He does that a lot. Over loops the right hand. Um, I I just don't. I just think his speed is just a lot better than. What Nate is going to think? Yeah, and I and I saw and I was saw him training, uh, training videos of him. He looks strong. He looks yeah. strong. He looks good. He looks active. He looks fresh. He looks really yep. fresh. And that's scary to me. If you have a young fighter who's fresh, hasn't been hit all too much. He mm-hmm. hasn't. And I'll say it again, like I say every week. You only had so many punches in your punch card. Nate Diaz punch card is full. Yeah. You can He's not, on his second card, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you 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 don't ha- you cannot take that many punches and still be fresh. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw the video of, of Jake training and and hitting the mitts and jumping rope. He's got his fresh legs. He's got a fresh, just I young. He's just younger. a young kid, and that, I think that that is the advantage. I really think that that's going to be the key to this whole to this fight tonight. Uh, uh, starting off with the fact that. You know, Nate Diaz hasn't been in the ring in a long time. Yeah, his last oh, fight well, was Tony Ferguson. Meaning, me, a ring meaning any combat Act, sports. Yeah. Has never been in what the What was your th- thinking of uh, Jake changing trainers? I don't know why he did that. He was he was doing very well. I, I thought BJ Flores was good for him. I thought he was good for him. I mean, I don't know if that's just something that his management, sometimes management says, you got to go with this guy. That's our better, that's our mm-hmm. better shot. But sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't work. I don't know many except... Maybe Lennox Lewis. De La Hoya, right? He's tra- he Dana, De-, De La Hoya train. You know, anytime he lost, he would, he would switch <laughs> trainers. I mean, so you really you could. De La Hoya was a great fighter. He doesn't get, I don't think, enough credit for how nope. good he really was. Mm-hmm. He he was phenomenal at one thirty nine. But every time he'd win 39, 40, 47, they kept, oh, you got to move up, you got to move up until until he got to one sixty. He's not a one sixty. No, he made one forty comfortably. He was dominant. Yep. You know, it's dominant in that, in that division. So don't give me the nonsense of, well, he lost to Bernard Hopkins. That, that, uh, he was a phenomenal fighter. Yep, he doesn't get enough respect. He does not get enough credit for that. Nope. I mean, he beat Trinidad. Let's be honest. Oh, he yeah. beat Trinidad. Mm-hmm. Where that would take him from there, I don't know. If he would have won that, that fight, who knows? That, been, that could have put him on yep. a different path. Yep. Certainly, Hopkins was out of his league because he was just a big guy. He was a big guy who had a lot of skill, and, and he beat him. But... You you get a guy like De La Hoya when he switches trainers like that. De La Hoya's skill is his skill. He his skill set was his skill set, and that was it. And I think honestly, and I think honestly, one of the things that that really put him on par with uh, some of the elite fighters was his hand speed. He had hand speed, and his and he was a big guy. But he made the weight. 
He made the weight. So yep. what will the trainer, him switching trainers do? Probably nothing. I think I think at this point Jake is kind of set in his way. I okay. really do. I don't I don't think anything will, will change. Um Nate has his trainer that he's had as a kid. Yeah. His boxing trainer. So I don't think that's gonna play a big part of it. But needless to say, that's what that's what our, our opinions are and that that was our breakdown. Let's get a pick here for if you were if you were a betting guy. Which I know you are. <laughs> yeah. What would you, if you were to bet tonight? Because now you're zero for one in bets. I am zero for the world because I have not. I am horrible at picking bets. What is your out? What is your outcome? Your pick and what round or is it a decision? I am going to uh, pick Jake Paul. Mm-hmm. Split decision. Okay. Um, so I th- you think he's going to have the stamina to go? Yes, I, d- okay. I honestly do. I think uh, he's going to put enough in the be- in the bank. First couple rounds, and then Nate might come on strong, uh, but I think he's going to bo- outbox Nate, and he's just going to run around, box him, stick the jab. He might set up the right hand a couple times and hit him. I watching other videos. I was, you know, watching, and I was like, you know what? He might knock him out. Mm. Jake might knock him out, but I don't think Nate can go back to Stockton with getting knocked out by Jake Paul. No, probably not. <laughs> you know, yeah, probably that, not. But he. That's the other thing. Jake don't get enough respect for what nah, he's doing. He's one hundred percent in, and I, you know, he doesn't get enough respect. He he is actually not bad for someone who's had. What, he's got five fights, six and he's six, six and one. Fight. He's fighting guys that are top level in MMA. Now you're gonna say, well, it's MMA. They can in combat sport. They can fight. Who are you kidding? They're sparring. The distance is different and stuff like that. So. Oh, but still, I mean, he's still. You know, you're worried about one thing, hands coming at you. I mean, yeah, you're oh, yeah. worried about everything yep. coming at you, including the stool. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're really on point there. But you're going with... I'm going with Jake Paul, Jake split Paul, decision. Split decision. Okay. I think it might... I think Nate might get cut, too, in this fight. He does have the tendency to cut. His last cut His last cut was They're pretty bad. They're going to bump heads or something. Yeah. Jake likes to go down with his head. Mm, pretty. That's pretty much... I mean, he could punch him, and, and that jab could open that. Quick. Yeah. Uh, the where the where the cuts are right above the eyebrow. That's a horrible place to have mm-hmm. a, a cut that re- reoccurs because even in sparring and everything else, it cuts open. That's what yep. it is. Me on my pick, and I picked this on the show this morning. I believe Jake will knock him out within two, and I say that because I think Jake <laughs> is going to catch him early. You think so? I really do. I saw him on the video. Who? Uh, Jake. Okay. Hit in the mitts. Jumping rope, fresh legs, fresh body. I think he's got to get him out early. I think he has to get him out early, or else because if it goes any further, his, you know, Jake's punches are going to start to diminish. If he realizes he can't hurt Nate, he might be in trouble. I don't see him getting knocked out. I see Nate getting knocked out. And I see him getting knocked out early, and I think it's going to be pretty bad. Wow, that is my opinion. I, I just, I, I you know, and I. Uh, believe me, do not bet on my on my accord. <laughs> bet the opposite, and you will win. So look at for Nate Diaz to knock him out early in the first round. In the first <laughs> round, because my my picks are never good. But I just had a gut feeling when I saw him. I saw him training. I said, "Wow, he's really putting in the work." Nate Diaz, whether Nate Diaz is work that he was putting in on the video. The only thing I'm, that's concerning is Nate said, "I don't care what's the outcome of this fight." He said that yesterday. The, that's never good in boxing. It's he, never he's, good. No, he's he's already. Is he looking past this and just going, wants the money and go to looking UFC? Looking past it, if he gets knocked out by Jake Paul, he, there is no going back to UFC. You don't think McGregor and him will go to third? I think so. I don't. I don't know if that would even sell anymore. If he if he got knocked out by Jake Paul, think about it. If he got knocked out by Jake, Jake Paul, do you think people are going to pay a hundred bucks to see him get going with McGregor? Yep. I don't think so. I don't buy it because I think McGregor is going to get knocked out in his next fight anyway. Against uh, Chandler? Chandler. If they fight. If they fight. But or then Gaethje. Hurt, uh, Gaethje. Yeah, G- uh, Gaethje. Either one. Yeah. Either one. He's get, I think he's getting knocked out. Oh, yeah. I really do. I don't. I don't. I think the McGregor train is over. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Time to jump on somebody else on, in, for UFC to ride that train. I think his train is over. Whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. Usually I'm wrong. But, <laughs> I mean, I think that train's over. I can't see him. I have not seen improvement by McGregor. No. And Pat Riley always said, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Yep. So I think he's just getting worse. And I really think he'll get knocked out his next fight, and that'll be the end of that. He's got over $100 million in the bank. He makes a half a billion dollars in investments. 
I mean, and, and endorsements too. How can you possibly want to be in the ring? Uh, I don't yeah. care how I don't care how much you say. Oh, it's, I do it for the love of it. No, you don't. No, that ends when you can eat. That ends when you can eat comfortably. It just does. So I mean, I could see him. I mean, you do think Chandler's eating like he does? No. So no. of course he's like that. McGregor's had too much fun, and I think it's I think it's finally going to catch up with him. Yep. And that's it. I really do. So anyway, new merch just came out. There's a Potter Brand podcast T-shirts. Uh, if you would like to get a shirt right now, I will take orders at george at georgiebagels.com. Put your name, put your number where I could, or email address and your number where I could contact you, and I will get back to you. We have not set up the website yet for that, but that's george at georgiebagels.com. George at g e o r g i e bagels.com. You can tell me what you want, what size you want. We can get that right out to you, and I'll, I'll give you the, you know, I'll correspond with you back to, to let you know the details. But right now, this is just new, just came out now, so we have it on sale right now. That being said, today, this will be it for a little bit as far as these fights go on. I don't know of any that, that are coming up that we could do another edition of the Zapata Brand Podcast Boxing Edition. Well, September's Canelo versus well, Can Well, I mean, that one, yeah. That, yeah. that one will definitely do. Charlo Canelo, that is a, a fight that I'm, that one I'm be, I'll be paying for. I definitely want to see that one. Um, we'll definitely do that. Uh, I know that Leo has a show coming up in November, mm -hmm. and that he'll be coming on on the show in the the Zapata Brand Podcast Boxing Edition to show us a little preview of what's going on. I did hear that he may be fighting, um, and uh, we're still trying to find a dead guy to get in the ring with him. But uh, <laughs> no luck as of now. That guy died 80, in 86. <laughs> um, but he's, that is the, the, what I'm hearing now. I don't, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I know there's a lot of medicals and um, eye exams that have to be done by all the people involved. There's a, I think I'm pretty sure there's about three or four fighters that are fighting that are about the age of 50. So that'll be May 4th. He will come on and talk more about that in the next coming weeks. But I will have in studio August 13th. Special guest. Uh, I will not announce it yet until we have everything secured up. You will see a video, a coming attraction video, drop probably Wednesday. Um, that will tell you who it's going to be, and he will be in studio here that Sunday, August 13th. We will film it. We'll drop it as fast as we can. Again, the bow interview just didn't go well. We're going to get something for, with Bo this week. We'll put that together, and then we'll put that out for you, too. David Kitchen drops this week. Mark Nespoli dropped last night. Great interview on both of those both of those people. It was great. Yeah, it was. Had a good time. Um, but that being said, don't be envious of what I've accomplished in my life. Be inspired by what you can do in yours. We'll see you next time. Thank you.